Many automotive experts agree that the future of the gasoline-powered automobile is limited. Gasoline is becoming more and more expensive, and the world's oil deposits will someday be depleted. Also, the combustion of fossil fuels, such as gasoline, is a major source of air pollution and a major contributor to climate change. So, what is next? Two contenders as sources of energy for the future automobile are the lithium-ion battery and the hydrogen fuel cell. Each technology has significant benefits, drawbacks, and limitations. Lithium-ion batteries are rechargeable batteries that work by using the potential difference of lithium. Lithium by itself is a very reactive metal, and wants to give its valence electron a way to become more stable. In a lithium-ion battery, there are two sides, the anode and the cathode. In the middle, there is a layer called the electrolyte. The electrolyte only allows lithium ions to pass through, not electrons. When discharging, the electrons must go around the electrolyte on a designated path, and this flow of electrons is what we call electricity. The lithium ions go straight through the electrolyte to the other side, forming a metal oxide and becoming stable. When charging, the reverse happens, and the lithium goes through the electrolyte while the electrons travel their path to the opposite side, forming a reserve of lithium ions ready to give off their electrons. If the system was somehow damaged, and the electrolyte layer was no longer there, then all of the lithium ions would go straight to the other side, and that's how a fire starts. The reason many lithium ion batteries, such as the common 18,650 cells, are in a circular cylinder shape is because it allows the battery to take up the least volume. Flat sheets of the anode, cathode, and the electrolyte are rolled tightly together to form a cylinder of dense energy. In fact, the battery pack used in Tesla cars are just thousands of smaller cylindrical batteries wired together. Lithium batteries of other sizes also work with the same idea, such as the flat ones found in mobile phones, but they are just shaped differently. One advantage of batteries made of many smaller cells is their ability to handle large amounts of stress. Since there are many cells, the stress is distributed upon each individual cell, which lessens the stress each one receives. If it was one huge battery, then that single cell would have to handle the stress, which lessens its lifetime. Hydrogen fuel cell combines hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity, heat, and water. Fuel cells are often compared to batteries. Both convert the energy generated by the chemical reaction into usable electricity. However, the fuel cell will generate electricity as long as the fuel, hydrogen, is supplied, never losing its charge. The first fuel cells were invented by Sir William Grove in 1838. The first commercial use of gasoline cells came more than a century after the invention of the hydrogen fuel cell by Francis Thomas Bacon in 1932 the bacon fuel cell, after its inventor. It has been used in the NASA space system since the mid-1960s to generate satellite and space energy. Since then, fuel cells have been used in many other applications. Fuel cells are used for basic and supportive energy in commercial, industrial and residential buildings and in remote or inaccessible areas. Fuel cells act as batteries, but they do not shrink or need to be refilled. They generate electricity and heat as long as gasoline is used. The fuel cell has two electrodes, the negative electrode, or anode, and the positive electrode, or cathode, amplified near the electrolyte. Fuel, such as hydrogen, is fed to the anode, and air is fed to the cathode. In a hydrogen fuel cell, an anode catalyst separates hydrogen molecules into protons and electrons, which travel in different directions to the cathode. Electrons travel through the outer circuit generating electrical flow. The protons travel through the electrolyte to the cathode, where they combine with oxygen and electrons to produce water and heat. But these are not the only technologies being used or in the process of development. Lithium-ion batteries and hydrogen fuel cells are great, but aren't the only solutions to powering cars effectively. Let's see a few. Sony is working on this technology and claims the new lithium sulfur batteries will have 40% higher energy density and lower production costs than today's lithium ion batteries. Currently, the problem is that the electrodes degrade way too fast for commercial applications. The hunt for solution is underway. 
Batteries could disappear more or less overnight if we can finally master nanotechnology and produce a stable and usable version of graphene. Graphene supercapacitors should be a better option. Supercapacitors can charge and discharge more efficiently compared to batteries. They hold less energy per unit of volume and can do a much better job of supplying power and recharging. If we can actually produce them from graphene, we'll save the energy density through weight saving and improved packaging. Graphene holds the key to a massive quantum leap forward for mankind. Once we can make it commercially available, it will change the world of material science, wearable technology and a lot more. The Pacific Northwest National Laboratory at the Department of Energy has made this new battery, and it's hard to argue against this new dual liquid battery's potential. By adding hydrochloric and sulfuric acid, Researchers have produced prototype batteries with 70% more energy density than a lithium-ion battery of similar proportions. They are mainly aimed at the power pack market and could store energy from wind and solar farms. They can also propel a car up to 1,000 miles on a single charge and make them faster. So redox flow batteries could, instead, offer the chance to reduce weight from electric cars of the future and offer similar performance and a much larger range. Stanford University has created an aluminum battery that could slash charging times. A smartphone could take a full charge in just 60 seconds in a car, in minutes. Right now, the output of 1.5V just isn't enough for a car, decent phone, or more or less anything else, but researchers are working on it. With an aluminum negatively charged cathode and a graphite anode, it's safe, lightweight and it does have the potential for improved energy density. This technology uses anaerobic bacteria to process acetate with a reduction oxidation method that releases electrons. This one is in its infancy and researchers in the Netherlands have only got a prototype through 15 recharging cycles. If it does reach fruition, the bioelectrochemical battery will be a natural bedfellow for solar panels, as the researchers are tuning the battery to store energy for 16 hours and then release it over the following 8. Technically the bacteria could reproduce and the battery could have a near infinite lifespan, but there are a lot of hurdles to overcome before this lithium ion alternative becomes a production reality. Now, solar panels are horrendously inefficient. Future solar panels are going to be way more advanced in the future, especially with Elon Musk putting tremendous efforts into the solar roof that the whole surface of the car could be a solar panel in the years to come, probably enough to entirely power a car. There's a long way to go and the panels need to get better, but they will. So, the cars of the future really could be entirely self-sufficient and could even feed power back into the grid. What if the car didn't have its own power at all? What if the road is the power source and the car effectively works like a much more advanced slot car racer that just absorbs the power? Well, that's already happened in Sweden, in a seriously crude form, where trucks hook into overhead power lines. The Netherlands has a solar road, too, which is actually a bicycle path that supplies the power to lights and other peripherals. The cars will be able to be lighter, they'll inflict less damage on the road and the energy production process will be 10 times smarter. The investment in infrastructure would be massive and we simply cannot strip the batteries from cars until the whole road network has power. It's simply a case of making them smaller and laying down a film of metal oxide. Solid electrolytes can also act as the electrolyte, binder and separator, eliminating components. Compacting the basic components so they are nanometers or micrometers thick means that an entire battery cell could be just millimeters thick. That means we can pack a huge amount more density into each and every power pack and carbon nanotubes can offer an even more efficient battery. So, batteries with a similar range could get smaller or, more likely, the range could increase dramatically. Current production methods include pulsed laser deposition, magnetron sputtering, chemical vapor deposition and soul gel processing. They're all expensive, but a simple advance in 3D printing could bring thin film batteries into the mainstream and potentially boost battery density by an order of magnitude immediately.
Well, you must have heard of, or even use, solid state drives, SSDs, which have helped take data storage to a whole new level in laptops and the same technology could drive battery technology forward. Technically, solid state batteries could provide the same kind of leap that thin film batteries could provide over lithium ion. Solid state batteries won't just offer benefits in terms of efficiency and packaging, they will also be much safer. The fire risk is reduced to virtually zero and recent Tesla crashes proved just what a drama that could be. The battery could, theoretically, last a lifetime as well, and the weather won't affect their efficiency. MIT's and Samsung's research could mean we skip thin film batteries altogether and go straight to solid state batteries. But it's not going to be commercially viable for years. According to Emily Newton, the availability of lithium is sustainable for the next few years. Nevertheless, as every material on Earth, it runs out throughout the years because of human overconsumption. As lithium seems to be one of the most helpful elements when speaking about the production of sustainable batteries, and then being used to produce electric cars, its availability decreases every year. As years go by, the interest in buying electric cars has risen exponentially. In 2010, from being 17,000 of them on the world's roads it increased to around 7.2 million by 2019. In conclusion, we can say that lithium could be our main source of sustainable batteries for the next few years, but we need to be aware of the risks of overconsumption and take them into consideration, as well as search for other sources of energy, preferably self-regenerating, that can also be potential for a sustainable way of living and production. Speaking about hydrogen, according to the U.S. Department of Energy, it is the most abundant element on Earth. Nevertheless, it is usually found as part of another compound and must be separated into pure hydrogen, H2, to be used as fuel for electric vehicles. The environmental impact and energy efficiency of hydrogen depends on how it is produced, and nowadays there are several production methods in existence and development which allow us to produce pure hydrogen, H2, without polluting the environment as fossil fuels. In conclusion, we can say that hydrogen is available for human consumption as being the most abundant element, and that as time goes by, chemicals and engineers are developing more and more ways of producing it which aren't a big threat to our environment. Lithium batteries are expensive largely because of the components which go into them. The priciest component in each cell is the cathode, metals like cobalt, Nickel lithium and manganese are needed in cathodes to pack in more energy which are often expensive. As quoted in the Bloomberg NEF, the average battery cost for a typical electric vehicle adds up to about $7,350 which is 87% less compared to the past decades. However the average pack price of $156 per kilowatt hour is still above the $100 threshold at which the cost of an electric vehicle should match a car with an internal combustion engine. With the increase in innovations and in technology manufacturers are focusing on replacing high-cost cobalt with nickel which is estimated to cost $93 per kWh by 2024, according to BNEF forecasts. Under normal driving car powered with lithium batteries or EV cars can last 10 years before they need to be replaced. Currently, the average cost to replace a battery is $5,500, if it needs replacing after the warranty expires. Federal law requires automakers to warrant electric vehicle batteries for 8 years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. Extreme temperatures, both heat and cold, lead to increased wear of the battery which affects the battery longevity. Leaving cars fully charged or at low level for extended periods of time are other ways that increase the degradation of the batteries, which would lead to expensive maintenance costs. However as there are fewer moving parts compared to traditional gasoline powered cars there are fewer things that can go wrong. Other than the normal wear and tear replacements like tires, brake pads and windshield wipers, the overall wear and tear of an electric car is less than that of a traditional gasoline powered car. In 2018, over 99% of hydrogen was made using fossil fuels, but hydrogen can also be produced cleanly using renewable electricity to split water in an electrolyzer. With the cost of wind and solar continuing to fall, the question is whether the cost for electrolyzers and renewable hydrogen can follow. The cost of alkaline electrolyzers made in North America and Europe fell 40% between 2014 and 2019, 
and Chinese-made systems are already up to 80% cheaper than those made in the West. If electrolyzer manufacturing can scale up, and costs continue to fall, then our calculations suggest renewable hydrogen could be produced for $0.70 to $1.60 kg in most parts of the world before 2050. This is equivalent to gas priced at $6.12 MMBTU, making it competitive with current natural gas prices in Brazil, China, India, Germany and Scandinavia on an energy equivalent basis, and cheaper than producing hydrogen from natural gas or coal with carbon capture and storage. Hydrogen's low density makes it considerably harder to store than fossil fuels. If hydrogen were to replace natural gas in the global economy today, 3-4 times more storage infrastructure would need to be built, at a cost of $637 billion by 2050 to provide the same level of energy security. Storing hydrogen in large quantities will be one of the most significant challenges for a future hydrogen economy. Low cost, large scale options like salt caverns are geographically limited, and the cost of using alternative liquid storage technologies is often greater than the cost of producing hydrogen in the first place. Low density also makes hydrogen expensive to transport via road or ship. However, hydrogen flows nearly three times faster than methane through pipes making this a cost-effective option for large-scale transport, figure 4. But for hydrogen to become as ubiquitous as natural gas, a huge, coordinated program of infrastructure upgrades and construction would be needed, as hydrogen is often incompatible with existing pipes and systems. The Incentives for Zero Emissions Vehicles ISEV, program that the Canadian government offers gives up to $5,000 in tax credits to incentivize consumers to buy more fuel-efficient cars. To qualify for the tax break, the car must be battery electric, a plug-in hybrid, or be powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. If a car qualifies for the incentive, a minimum tax break of $2,500 is given to the consumer upon purchase or a 48-month lease. The incentives vary upon the model of the car and how environment-friendly it is. A car that qualifies for the program must be leased for a minimum of 12 months to receive a tax break. The minimum incentive given for a 12-month lease is $625 and a maximum of $1,250. For a 24-month lease, a minimum of $1,250 is given and a maximum of $2,500, while for a 36-month lease, a minimum of $1,875 is given and up to a maximum of $3,750. Lithium-ion batteries have received a lot of mixed views based on the benefits they provide to the environment, such as decreasing the overall carbon dioxide emissions hence reducing the problem of global warming, and the unwanted impacts on the environment. Electric cars release their stored electrochemical energy without any combustion. Hence, no fuel is being burned and no air pollution through CO2 emission. Electric cars also produce less noise pollution as they are much quieter than conventional vehicles. Research by the European Energy Agency found that, even with electricity generation, the carbon emissions of an electric car are around 17-30% lower than driving a petrol or diesel car. The emissions from electricity generation are also dramatically improved when low carbon electricity is used. Lithium extraction harms this oil and also causes air contamination, river pollution and kills wildlife. The water consumption associated with lithium mining is significant every ton of lithium produced, 500,000 gallons of water is used, which in turn causes water pollution. Lithium operations have also damaged soil which farmers use to herd livestock in the region. Recycling of lithium-ion batteries, while currently being researched, has been difficult causing some batteries to be placed in landfill sites where they can leak their contents further affecting the environment. Just like lithium-ion batteries, hydrogen fuel cells have received mixed reviews on its environmental impact on the world. Below are a few examples on the positive and negative effects on the environment of hydrogen fuel cells. Water is the only byproduct for making it have a significantly low effect on the environment and climate. Hence, no pollution. Hydrogen can be produced domestically from resources like natural gas, coal, solar energy, 
wind, and biomass. This shows that hydrogen has a potentially great abundance of production meaning people will be able to rely less on fossil fuels petroleum, reducing pollution and climate change. It is also a renewable source of energy. Hydrogen fuel cell technology provides a high density source of energy with good energy efficiency. Hydrogen has the highest energy content of any common fuel by weight. Hence, it is more energy efficient than fossil fuels which, as previously stated, would reduce the need of fossil fuels as a source of energy decreasing the effect on the climate and environment. Hydrogen fuel cells do not produce noise pollution like other sources of renewable energy, such as wind power. This also means that, much like electric cars, hydrogen-powered vehicles are much quieter than those that use conventional internal combustion engines. Today, most hydrogen fuel is obtained from natural gas, which produces harmful byproducts such as carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, contributing to global warming. A system for producing, storing, and transporting hydrogen fuel cells efficiently would be expensive, and around 10-20% of the hydrogen would escape into the atmosphere. The escaped hydrogen would be oxidized when it reaches the stratosphere, which would cool the stratosphere and create more clouds. This would delay the breakup of the polar vortex at the north and south poles, making the holes in the ozone layer larger and longer lasting. The extra hydrogen will lead to a 5-8% rise in ozone depletion at the North Pole and between 3 and 7% at the South Pole. As seen in the previous parts, the positive environmental impacts of hydrogen fuel cells are clearly greater than its negatives while the opposite occurs with lithium-ion batteries. Therefore, Based of the information it is safe to say that hydrogen fuel cells have a more positive impact on the environment than lithium-ion batteries, and as technology advances further and the use of more renewable sources of energy are implemented for the extraction of hydrogen the negative effects of hydrogen fuel cells will drastically decrease making it even more of a suitable replacement to both lithium-ion battery-powered cars and petroleum-powered cars. With increase in battery life manufacturers are expecting a reduction in battery capacity of about 2.3% of its starting range annually. However if batteries fail before the expected warranty period of 8 years or 100,000 miles a cost-free replacement will be provided as stated by the federal law. A. Side deterioration and non-uniformity on the anode, B. Morphology changes, increase of impedance and phase separation on the cathode, C. Pitting corrosion on the cathode al current collector, and D. Decomposition of the lip 6 salt in the electrolyte at elevated temperature. Use partial charges. Limiting battery temperature extremes extends battery life especially prohibiting charging below 0 degrees Celsius. Avoid high charge and discharge currents as high currents place excessive stress on the battery. The present high costs of production of fuel cells is understandable today as the main method of obtaining hydrogen is through fossil fuels which are in high demand. However, as energy usage continues to shift towards more reliable sources such as solar, wind, and hydroelectric the ease with which hydrogen can be obtained will increase causing the costs of production of fuel cells to drastically decrease in the future due to hydrogen's vast abundance. Today's technology would not be able to compare as it has not been made to handle hydrogen gas transportations therefore the losses would be far too great today. However, if more investing is put into refueling systems for hydrogen fuel cell cars, in the future refueling would be far more easier, cheaper, and have fewer loses than today. <laughs>